Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4 Chapter 6 Text 37 Upavishtam Darbha Mayam Upavishtam Darbha Mayam Vrishyam Brahma Sanatanam Vrishyam Brahma Sanatanam Naradaya Pravochantam Naradaya Pravochantam Pratchate Shrinvatam Satam Translation on purpose by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada he was seated on a straw mattress and speaking to all present, including the great sage Narad, to whom he specifically spoke about the absolute truth. The Lord was sitting on a mattress of straw because such a sitting place is accepted by persons who are accepting, who are practicing austerities to gain understanding of the absolute truth. In this verse, it is specifically mentioned that he was speaking to the great sage Narad a celebrated devotee. Narad, Lord Na, uh, Narad Muni and Lord Shiva are also brothers. So Narad was asking Lord Shiva about devotional service and Shiva, being the topmost Vaishnava, was instructing him. In other words, Lord Shiva and Narad were discussing the knowledge of the Veda, but it is to be understood that the subject matter was devotional service. Another point in this connection is that Lord Shiva is the supreme instructor and the great sage Narad is the supreme audience. Therefore, the supreme subject matter of Vedic knowledge is bhakti or devotional service. So here, Narad Muni is, speak, is asking Lord Shiva about devotional service and Lord Shiva is uh, speaking about devotional service. Kritporo Dakshine Swayam Ah, Padmam Chajanuni. Ah, Padmam Padmam Chajanuni. Bahum Prakoshte Akshamalam. Bahum Prakoshte Akshamalam. Asinam Tarkamutraya. Asinam Tarkamudraya. His left leg was placed on his right thigh and his left hand was placed on his left thigh. This, this sitting posture is called Virasan. In his right hand, he held Rudraksh beads and his finger was in the mode of argument. So Lord Shiva, he chants on Rudraksh beads and he's sitting in the Virasan. Also what comes, what is striking, you see when the pure devotees meet, the subject matter is uh, devotional service, pastimes of the Lord. That This is what is the subject matter of speaking and hearing between the devotees. They're always, we see the Srimad Bhagavatam is always conversation between the devotees and they are speaking about Lord Krishna, his pastimes, his incarnations or, or about devotional service. So that is actually association. Hearing and chanting in the association of devotees. That is really association. The yeah, but I don't understand that part. His finger was in a mode of argument. <laughs> huh, yeah, let's, let's see now if there's some Prabhupada's Shed some light to it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So the sitting posture described herein is called Virasan according to the system of Ashtanga Yoga performances. In the performance of yoga, there are eight divisions such as Yam and Niyam, controlling, following the rules and regulations, then practicing the sitting postures, etc. So in the Ashtanga, Ashtanga, the eight, it's eight limbs. That's why it's called Ashtanga Yoga. So the first is the Yam and Niyam. That don't do this and do these things. Yam and the Niyam. Following the rules and regulations. Don't do certain things. Do certain things. Then the third is Asan. How you're supposed to sit. 
Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the seat has to be neither very high nor low. Also, he says you have to go to the forest. So besides Virasan, there are other sitting postures such as, such as Padmasan and Siddhasan. Practice of these asan, asanas without elevating oneself to the position of realizing the Super Soul Vishnu is not the perfectional stage of yoga. So we can see that Srila Prabhupada repeatedly keeps saying what's the goal of yoga because many people at that time were spreading spirituality by just Telling people, okay, yoga means doing this exercises and that, that is spiritual. So Shla Prabhupada is again and again trying to remind us that the goal of yoga is to realize the Paramatma. Lord Shiva is called Yogeshwar, the master of all yogis and Krishna is called Yogeshwara. Yogeshwar, Yogeshwar and Yogeshwar. Yogeshwar indicates that no one can surpass the yoga practice of Lord Shiva. And Yogeshwar indicates that no one can surpass the yogic perfection of Krishna. So the position of Krishna and Lord Shiva is described here. Yog Ishwar. Yog Ishwar, master of yogis, that is Lord Shiva. And Krishna is called Yogeshwar because Krishna uh, is the, the perfect yogi. No one can surpass the yogic perfection. Of, of Krishna. So Krishna is the perfect yogi, Yogeshwar. Krishna is called the master of all mystics, Yogeshwar. And the practice of yoga, that is Lord Shiva. Another significant word is Tarka Mudra. This indicates that the fingers are opened and the second finger is raised along with the arm to impress the audience with some subject matter. This is actually a symbolic representation. The second finger is raised along with the arm to impress the audience with some subject matter. I'm not sure. Is it like this, you know? That because he's explaining something. He's yeah. speaking something. So we also tend to do that when we are telling people, you know, we raise the finger and we are like, you have to do like this. Don't do like this. So Tarka Mudra, you want, we can see what is Tarka Mudra right now. Mudra and put it in, yeah. So the finger is like this. Finger is outstretched yeah, you know, because he is, yeah. he is Hare explaining. Krishna. Yes. Yeah, all the gurus also have that, like Guru Nanak Sahib and all the gurus usually have their pictures this way, right? Up. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Even yeah. Sadhu Vaswani has his finger up like that. <laughs> so I think okay, that. Cool. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. So Lord Shiva is just doing what is common practice for them then, I guess. So reading on 39. Tam Brahma Nirvana Samadhi Mashritam Tam Brahma Nirvana Samadhi Mashritam Vyupa Ashritam Girisham Yoga Kaksham Yupashritam girisham yoga kaksham. Saloka pala manayo manunam. Saloka pala munayo manunam. Adyam manum pra jale pra nemoho. Adyam manum pra jale pra nemoho. All the sages and demigods headed by Indra offered their respectful obeisances unto Lord Shiva with folded hands. Lord Shiva was dressed in saffron garments and absorbed in trance, thus appearing to be the foremost of all sages. In this verse, the word Brahmananda is significant. This Brahmananda or Brahma Nirvan is explained by Prahlad Maharaj. When one is completely absorbed in the Adhokshaja, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is beyond the sense perception of materialistic persons, one is situated in Brahmananda. So here, Shla Prabhupada is explaining to us the, that Brahmananda, Brahma Nirvan is being used here, that Lord Shiva was um, absorbed in trance and he was... Um, 
uh, he's been saying that uh, Brahmananda is significant and Prahlad Maharaj is saying Krishna uh, is called Adhokshaja. Why is he called Adhokshaja? Because he cannot be approached by our material senses. Krishna is transcendental. So he cannot, uh, we cannot approach him by our material senses. But when uh, a transcendentalist when a transcendentalist is able to realize God, he's able to see, then he's situated on the platform of Brahmananda because that is a Brahman platform, Brahma Nirvana. So this is the Brahman platform above the material modes of nature. It is impossible to conceive of the existence, name, form, quality, and pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he is transcendently situated beyond the conception of materialistic persons. Because materialistics, materialists cannot imagine or conceive of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they may think that God is dead, but factually he is always existing in his Satchit Ananda Vigraha, his eternal form. So we can see now most most of the society is like that. We have turned away from God. We, we, have, we don't uh, believe in the existence of God. Why? Because we cannot see him with our material eyes or hear him with our material ears. And so we say there is no God. But God is there. He has a transcendental form. We cannot approach him with our material eyes. You know, it's like saying, oh, all these bacteria in front of me are not there because I can't see them. But if we get a microscope powerful enough, we will be able to see it. You know, that's how we have become towards God. So God exists. He's eternal. He is the absolute truth. And his form is Satchit Ananda Vikraha. His eternal form. Constant meditation concentrated on the form of the Lord is called Samadhi, ecstasy or trance. So Samadhi means meditating on the form of the Supreme Lord constantly. Constantly meditating on the form of the Lord. Samadhi means particularly concentrated attention. So one who has achieved the qualification of always meditating on the, on the personality of Godhead is to be understood to be always in trance and enjoying Brahma Nirvana or Brahmananda. Lord Shiva exhibited those symptoms and therefore it is stated that he was absorbed in Brahmananda. So Lord Shiva, he's always meditating. We see his photo always in meditation. Who is he meditating on? On Lord, Sh on Lord Krishna. And because he's always meditating on Lord Krishna, this position, the platform is called uh, that he's absorbed in Brahmananda. Brahma Nirvana. And this, because Nirvana doesn't mean nothing or zero. You know, nirv we think, oh, Nirvana means zero or nothing or some light. No. Real Nirvana is understanding the position of Krishna, being able to see Krishna, understanding our own position as souls. That is Brahma Nirvana. And Lord Shiva is situated in that position. Another significant word is Yoga Kaksham. Yoga Kaksha is the sitting posture in which the left thigh is fixed under one's tightly knotted saffron colored garment. So this is a sitting posture that Lord Shiva is sitting in, Yoga Kaksham. Left thigh is fixed under one's tightly knotted saffron colored garment. Also the words manunam, adhyam are significant here because they mean a philosopher or one who's thoughtful and can think very nicely. Such a man is called Manu. Lord Shiva is described in this verse as the chief of all thinkers. Lord Shiva, of course, does not engage in useless mental speculation. But as stated in the previous verse, he is always thoughtful regarding how to deliver the demons from their fallen condition of life. So Lord Shiva is not a, an atheist. Lord Shiva is not indulging in useless philosophy, just speaking out of his mind. No, 
Lord Shiva is himself practicing devotional service. He's situated on the platform of the Brahman. He's always in Samadhi, always constantly thinking of the form of the Lord. And what is his mood? He wants to deliver the lowest of the lowest, <clears throat> the lowest of mankind. He wants to deliver them and bring them to the spiritual platform. It is said that during the advent of Lord Chaitanya, Sadashiv appeared as Advaita Prabhu. And Advaita Prabhu's chief concern was to elevate the fallen conditioned souls to the platform of devotional service to Lord Krishna. So Sadashiv, the original Lord Shiva, who is in the Vaikuntha world, he came 500 years ago. Krishna came. Before Krishna came, Sadashiv came as Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya is an incarnation of Sadashiva and Mahavishnu. And he was so compassionate. He was seeing the fallen condition of society. And he said, he was seeing everyone was just engaged in mundane rituals, mundane, you know, uh, uh, thinking that, oh, if I do some ritual very nicely, show off my wealth, and that is spirituality. Everyone was, to that extent that they were also getting their pets married having a function for the, for the celebration of the pet's uh, marriage or children's marriage also. He said, what's going to happen to society? So out of his compassion, he loudly called to Krishna to come and deliver us. He could have delivered us himself, but he felt himself incapable. This is the mood of Lord Shiva. And he called Lord Krishna himself so since people were engaged in useless occupations which would continue their material existence, Lord Shiva in the form of Lord Advaita appealed to the Supreme Lord to appear as Lord Chaitanya to deliver these conditioned souls. Actually, Lord Chaitanya appeared on the request of Lord Advaita. Similarly, Lord Shiva is a Sampradaya, the Rudra Sampradaya. He's always thinking about the deliverance of the fallen souls as exhibited by Lord Advaita Prabhu. So Lord Shiva also has a bona fide Sampradaya. Like we are in the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya version of Sampradaya. So Krishna speaks to Brahma and then we are coming in that line. So there is a line of Lord Shiva where Krishna gives knowledge to Lord Shiva and then Lord Shiva has his followers. The Rudra Sampradaya, the Acharya in that Sampradaya is Vishnu Swami. He's the Acharya of that Sampradaya. And you can see that it is because of the loud calling of Advaita Acharya, Lord Krishna came, Lord Chaitanya came to give us the chanting of the holy name. So we owe a lot. We owe a lot to Advaita Acharya. It's because of his compassion that uh, Krishna appears as Lord Chaitanya. Satupalabhyagatam Atmayonim. Satupalabhyagatam Atmayonim. Sura Sura Sher Abhivan Ditangarihi. Sura Sura Sher Abhivan Ditangarihi. Uthaya Chakre Sirasha Sirasabhi Vandanam Taya Chakri Sirasabhi Vandanam Arhatama Shaya Yateva Vishnuhu Arhatama Tasya Yateva Vishnu Lord Shiva's lotus feet were worshipped by both the demigods and demons, but still in spite of his exalted position, as soon as he saw that Lord Brahma was there among all the other demigods, he immediately stood up and offered him respect by bowing down and touching his lotus feet, just as Vamandev offered his respectful obeisances to Kashyap Muni. So here the reference is given. Vamandev is the Supreme Lord himself. But he touched the feet of his father, Kashyap Muni. Kashyap Muni is an ordinary living entity. Vamandev is the Supreme Lord, but he's playing the part of a son. 
So he is giving him proper respect, teaching us how we also have to act. Similarly, Lord Shiva is more exalted because Lord Shiva is, uh, you know, he's not an ordinary living entity. Yet, when he's seeing his father, Lord Brahma, he's offering him all respects. Kashyap Muni was in the category of the living entities, but he had a transcendental son, Vamande, who was an incarnation of Vishnu. Thus, although Lord Vishnu is the supreme personality of Godhead, he offered his respects to Kashyap Muni. Similarly, when Lord Krishna was a child, he used to offer his respectful obeisances to his mother and father, Nanda and Yashoda. Also, at the Battle of Kurukshetra, Lord Krishna touched the feet of Maharaj Yudhishthira because the king was his elder. So he, he, Krishna is not saying, hey, I'm God, why should I touch your feet, you know? No, but he's doing it because he's playing the part. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that he, he, he's, not, he's beyond all these duties. He's beyond it, but because he's appearing in a human-like form, he follows what is supposed to be done so that we can learn. He says that uh, whatever the great personality does, common men follow. So he said, if he's not going to set the example, then the entire society, uh, we are going to say, oh, well, Krishna didn't do it, so why shall I do it? So now we have no excuse, you know. So it appears then that the person, and, and Yudhishthira Maharaj knew that Krishna is God, that he's supreme Lord, but this is the etiquette. So when Krishna would meet Lord uh, Yudhishthira, he would offer obeisances, then with uh, Bhim and Arjun. I, mean, I, I don't know if Bhim also he would offer obeisances, or was it that Bhim and Arjun, they are similar in age to Krishna, so they would meet as friends embracing, and then Nakul and Saidev would offer obeisances to Krishna. So, you know, the etiquette. It appears then that the personality of God and Lord Shiva and the other devotees, in spite of their being situated in exalted positions, instructed by practical example, how to offer obeisances to their superiors. Lord Shiva offered his respectful obeisances to Brahma because Brahma was his father just as Kushyapuni was the father of Vaman. So even the other devotees, they are not saying we are pure devotees. So we are not going to follow any etiquette. We are beyond any etiquette. No. In fact, the pure devotees, they, they, they properly follow all the rules and regulations because they want to set the proper example for us to follow. Is that okay? Did anyone want to add or comment? I just have one question. So the nirvana, you said, that is a kind of a liberation, is it? Or is it merging in Brahma Jyoti? So because I've heard that this word a lot. Yeah. So Krishna says, there is in Bhagavad Gita also reference, mm. Prabhupada puts in the purport, that nirvana, people think, means zero or light, or nothing there. Mm -hmm. But nirvana actually means that you're beginning your spiritual life from the spiritual platform. Yes, the soul is liberated. It's from the point of liberation. But it's not that everything is zero. No, mm -hmm. there's activities there. That is the real life. Okay. okay. That's what's Because I've difference. heard that some also say that wo nirvan mein chale gai. like they in Jainism they say for their Mahavir Swami ke e wo nirvan pe gai that time so that means that he he realized his spiritual and then he started his spiritual journey does that mean that well I don't or maybe know what they, it means for them what they think but okay okay yeah for us I don't know what so that is the meaning for, them, for us but nirvana actually means the true beginning of true life. Okay. It's the beginning of the real life. The spiritual life is the beginning of the real life. It's not that everything is finished at nirvana. Okay. That is what the idea is. I think the realization, right? That's what it means. 
realization of your true realization. Yeah, your yeah, true self, the true identity, true self, the true identity. Yeah. That you are, identity. that you are the soul, that you are mm -hmm. the soul, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and that individual, that I'm an individual soul, not that I'm God, mm -hmm. not realizing okay. that I'm, yeah. okay. I am light. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, okay. That is true nirvana. Okay. Okay. Yes. That okay. is true liberation. Mm. Understanding I am a spirit, soul, part and parcel of God. Mm. And so let me do the activities that are uh, please send me. Uh, let me do the that are applicable for the soul. Soul. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhaktavinda ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.